Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining today's Inspire podcast. We've had a lot of inspiring podcasts, but I'm so excited to welcome this couple. I remember the first time I got to see them on stage in an event, and I was just so inspired, not only by the confidence, but by just the passion for this industry that we're in. And so I'm excited for you to welcome this amazing couple that just is changing the insurance industry in so many different ways. And for us here at Integrity, we're all about innovating. And what they're doing is truly innovating insurance into the next generation. And so I'm excited to welcome Andrew and Jennifer Gaines of Nobility Financial to the Integrity family and to the Inspire Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Oh, my gosh. I'm I'm not kidding. The first time I saw you on stage at a PHP event, I was like, where did they hire this guy? Because I I literally (laughs) thought you were like the hired MC talent. And if you had, like, if Patrick Bed David was hiring somebody, it had to be somebody big time. <laughs> and then I was, I asked Pat, I'm like, Where, where'd you hire him? He was like, no, he's one of our guys. And they're, oh, him wow. and his wife Jennifer are building this amazing company. I was like, oh my gosh. So I was immediately attracted to you. You're wearing <laughs> gold tennis shoes, yeah. gold Jordans, I think. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed you didn't rock those today. She told me not to. I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. And, and you were just telling me, we, we actually were just talking. It's like, who wore it better? He wore, wears it better. We, I don't know it's about like, that. This is our first all ginger yep. integrity podcast. It's this special. is representation for the like, ginger. We're going. Yeah. We're going all the way. <laughs> I've got some, I got some people behind the camera laughing. I don't. It's cool to be ginger. We're, yeah. like, I didn't like it when I was a kid, but it is what it is. There's not a lot of us left. I know. We're, yeah. we're going with it. So you said, I was going to change my jacket because I was like, don't. dude, nope. I, can't, I, I can't try to compete with your good looks, but your colors are blue and gold, right? Yeah, our team colors are blue and gold. Why, how did you come up with the blue and gold? I've always just been attracted to it. I think yeah. it's my favorite color combo, as blue, weird as that blue sounds. Blue champagne. Yeah, navy blue and champagne gold. Navy blue yeah. and champagne gold, yeah. specific. So integrity yeah. is blue and gold, and is really about setting the gold standard in everything we do, and, and that's exactly what you guys do. And the business you guys are building is so incredible. How did you guys get into the business? How did y'all start out? Well, we had a spiritual mentor. She yeah, was responsible mom. for the prayer team at church. Okay. And she invited us over to our house. She said, hey, I'm having some friends over for a dinner. For dinner. You should come over for dinner. And we had gone to her house for dinner before, so we thought it was a dinner. Yeah, we're like, okay, we'll go for dinner. And then, oh, and there's also going to be a presentation, yeah. right? Okay, so we had great. no idea. So y'all have a dinner. Yeah. You, you, like just Normal mashed dinner. potatoes and yeah. Yeah. grilled chicken or whatever. Yeah. And then there's like, okay, now we got a presentation. Yep. Yeah. And we're there like, were a yeah. bunch of other couples what? that were... We were down. I mean, yeah. yeah. There were, more, there were couples from the church there. There was probably maybe 20 people at the house. Mm-hmm. And she was in Hollywood. So she was used to having a lot of people at her house. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know what it was for. And then we sat down and someone starts talking about life insurance and financial services. And in my head, I didn't I didn't think I was qualified. I'm like, oh my gosh, why are we in this room? Like, did we just happen <laughs> to get in here? here? <laughs> and then she leans over and she says, I think you'd be really good at this business. I think if you guys do this business, I think you'll help a lot of people and you'll make a lot of money. And we didn't even know the presentation was happening. So for us, it was totally out of the blue. But yeah. we trusted her and we said, okay, well. Yeah, if you say it. And I think we're sitting there and I felt it in my spirit, this feeling I had never felt before. Mm. It was so interesting because I'm, I'm artistic in my background. And so I'm very much like a feeler, intuitive yeah. personality. And so it was just that my spirit was burning in a way I hadn't mm. felt before. And so I felt so strongly that it wasn't just you know, business that it was the Lord leading us there, that it was the Holy Spirit. Like I felt this burning. And so I just was like, I don't even know what this is. I don't know what business is. I don't know what insurance is. I have no idea. But it felt like that confirming witness that we were supposed to do it. Wow. And so y'all just said, sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. Sign me up. I, back a long time ago, I got invited to a dinner. Me and the girl I was dating at the time, hopefully Robin's not watching this. This was way <laughs> pre-Robin. These people from church invited us to dinner at their house. And, and I thought it was just dinner. Same thing. Same thing. And then they pull out their Mary Kay. 
and started selling this Mary Kay right there on the spot. And the lady, the lady can't never make this up. I'll never forget it. She's like talking about this eye cream. She goes, man. And this, I was like in my early 20s. So she goes, you got these like really bad, uh, you know, wrinkles under your eyes. I can't imagine what she'd say about me now. But so she's like, let me, let me show something. And she grabs and starts rubbing under my eyes. And I didn't know them that well, <laughs> to be honest. And so I'm like, Personal well, I'm, I'm going with it. Like I sold insurance door to door in the house. I'm like, I respect a salesperson, man. I'm like, let's go with it. But they, they were, she had been holding her cat the whole night, and I'm kind of allergic to cats. Oh, no. Um, and so all of a sudden, she puts it under there, and my eyes start, like, getting puffy. I didn't have any more wrinkles, but I couldn't see. Like, my, my eyes, like, oh, swelled no. up. I was like, okay. And so that girl, I, we didn't last very long, but she, she signed up, and she was a Mary Kay person for whatever. So I'm glad you got the financial services business and not the Mary Kay business. Yeah. A spirit was talking to me about that too, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit. So did you so did you buy the cream? I did. I actually ended up I wanted to get the heck out of there. I was like, I will do anything <laughs> to leave. if I can get a Benadryl. Get a Benadryl? <laughs> so, but I remember being like Oh, I thought we were just having dinner. Now we're doing something more. <laughs> yeah. But it, I mean, for you guys, I mean, think about how life changing that was for we're you. We're so grateful. Yeah. But also how life changing it was for so many other people. And you yeah. named your business Nobility Financial. Yeah. I talk about this all the time. I think that we're, this business is one of the most noble businesses yeah. in the world. Yeah. And we, yeah. we truly help so many people. And, and it's, it's also a virtuous business, and, and meaning that everybody wins. Very, very few businesses can everyone win. And, yeah. and a lot of business, and, and this is one of the things that I think you know business has gotten it wrong in, in a lot of ways, is in most business, I win, you lose. Mm. And it's a zero sum. If, if I'm gonna win, you have to lose. Or if you're gonna win, I have to lose. And so it creates like this weird like strife and yeah. weird like competition. But in the insurance business, everybody wins. So at the end of the day, the carrier wins and we're placing products with all of these amazing carrier partners. The agent wins in serving customers, the agency wins, and ultimately the consumer has to win. Yep. And so it creates this virtuous like business cycle. Mm -hmm. And then it's also an amazing business that everybody's excited for each other, right? And that, that was one of the things like, that if I'm successful, it doesn't mean that you can't be successful exactly. or vice versa. Yeah. And it's amazing when you go, man, I want you to be as successful as possible. Yeah. Whereas in the world, most of the time, it's I don't want you to be successful. I'm, I'm intimidated by that or I'm competitive. But I mean, it's a truly noble profession. And whenever you really help people, man, we help people in such a big way. Yeah. Real everyday people and it's something they really need. So you said that the spirit kind of talk to you about that like did, when did y'all name it nobility because I, I just love the name yeah so nobility has two different kind of sub definitions mm. so if you look up nobility there's you know character being genuine loving mercy acting justly just having character yeah but at the same time having integrity <laughs> yeah at the same time nobility is also you know formerly the aristocracy people with power wealth and influence so our whole thought process was there's a lot of really good people. I'm a former college pastor. So working in the church, you see a lot of really good people with character, yeah. but they don't have power, wealth, and influence in society. Hmm. And then sometimes you'll you know have the traditional stereotype of somebody with power, wealth, and influence, but they don't have character. And it happens on both sides of the yeah. spectrum. But our whole thought was, man, if we could create a platform where couples could be in a business, grow together as a family, improve their character, and improve their power, wealth, and influence, if you make successful people who have great character, they're going to go change the world. So oh, that. that's kind of what nobility represented. Man, I love that. And so you guys started this business together. So you were a college pastor. Yep. What was that like? What did? What was well, that like? when I got out of my master's program, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I was the kid who changed majors seven times and uh, got out, finished, and started working at a church. And it's usually from you know high school to adulthood, that's when yeah. most young adults stop attending church or being involved in a spiritual community. Yeah. And so I was tasked to make sure that they would have a community to, to be involved in. So we were constantly, you know, recruiting college age students and we we're building communities of people who would hang out and just do life together. Cause so much of the church world only happened on Sunday, maybe a midweek Bible study, but what do you do 
Monday through Saturday to really yeah. walk with these people. Yeah. And I think the big correlation that we loved about this business was you're really doing life Monday through Saturday with people. You're there in the midst of all of their conflict, their problems, and it's it really is building community and helping people grow. So oh, the transition, it was the same skill set, but just doing it in the marketplace. So whenever you whenever you first learned about this business, what was the what was the transition like? So you said we're in, like we're gonna do this. Did you quit your job and go all in, or were you kind no, of? No, we were part time. Uh, part time. We yeah. And we lived three hours away from the local office. Yeah. So oh my gosh. we would get in our Ford Explorer. So we're gonna do life every day, but <laughs> three hours away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we would drive yeah, yeah, three yeah. hours one way yeah. for a year and a half to go to training. Wow. So we spent our first year, a lot of our first year was just us driving back and forth. You know what I mean? Trying in this rhythm of, of of an adventure, I yeah. guess you could say, of just trying to like figure out what we were doing in business. Cause we had no idea anything about business or finance nothing. or insurance, like no context for the industry, nothing. So we spent a lot of time our first year really just driving around feeling really busy, yeah. like feeling like we were working really hard, but not really working very hard. So, or, I mean, and, and it's, it's hard. I remember yeah. whenever I first got into insurance, I was uh, in college and I was, uh, I was working at a, a retail store in South Plains Mall in Lubbock, Texas, and uh, this guy recruited me. I was like, I'm in. Like, I'm going to go all in. I was making five dollars ten cents an hour, and I was yeah. like, surely I can, I can do that. And and then I I had to drive. I, I mean, fifty three miles, so it wasn't three hours. <laughs> but I remember yeah. that that drive. At first, you're excited. You're like, man, this I'm going to take over the world. And then and then you're like. Man, that's hard. I had a bag phone back in those days. They didn't have like you know, your yep. cell phone. I literally had the bag phone, and I couldn't afford to call out on it because <laughs> my mom and dad were like, "We will kill you unless it's an emergency." So you're driving back and forth, li- listening to audio tapes like Zig Ziglar, guys like that, and then it, it's like, man, this is hard. And I know for you guys, it didn't come easy. <laughs> in fact. I mean, y'all, y'all may be the definition of perseverance. Um, yeah. Tell that story. Or insanity. Yeah. So our- they, they're very close. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe have to yeah. be pretty insane to persevere like you yeah. did. Yeah. I think our first year in, in the industry, we were naive in the best way. Like, I'm so thankful for how naive we were yeah. because we're driving around three hours back and forth staying overnight at our spiritual mom's house. We didn't have to have, we could cut the commute by an hour and a half and then an hour and a half back to our jobs. And, but it never occurred to us to quit. Like Mm. it never occurred to us that maybe we shouldn't do this industry. And it took us 13 months to make our first paycheck. (laughs) And when we got that first paycheck, it was like gold. It was like, we were millionaires. Like we were going, it wasn't a lot. It was not a lot of money, but we were going straight to the top. So so the funny thing is the details are, are, you make it sound better than it was. So put this in perspective. I, I remember one of our one of our partners, a guy named Jim Sweeney, one of the greatest salesmen I know. It took him, I think he said, six hundred contacts. He talked to six hundred people wow. before he got his first appointment. Maybe the worst appointment setter in the world. <laughs> and now he owns this. I mean, created this amazing business called American Senior Benefits, and it's done incredible well. And one of the icons in our business. For you guys, it took. 12, 13, 13 months, months, 13 yeah. months for you to finally make your first sell yeah. and your commission was $84. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Best $84 we ever made. It was like so, amazing. So it's like, I'm trying to do the math. There's like $7, <laughs> $7, seven cents an hour. I don't know less. Yeah. If funny. you factor in like the, um, the driving <laughs> gas. And the gas and just the, so eighty four dollars. But the fact that yeah. you and look, I think this is something really special that y'all were doing this as a couple. Yeah. That you could also encourage each other because if you weren't, you would have probably been like, "You're crazy." <laughs> like show like, me the money, babe. Like show, like yeah. you got to do something because you're not making yeah. any money. But eighty four dollars, and you thought, man, what was your thoughts? Well, God doesn't change His mind. Yeah, it was really it was really clear to me that even though we didn't have immediate success, that that burning I felt in my spirit was either if I gave up, it was I was saying God was a liar and he didn't mean it when I felt that or I was a liar and I didn't hear God. 
And mm. I wasn't okay with either of those two things being a reality. I wasn't okay with God being a liar and I wasn't okay with myself being a liar and, and not hearing him. So to me, that I think really sustained us that it was like, we see other people having success. We know that this industry has success. We just have to figure it out. We just have to like, learn and overcome and overcome our fears and really actually engage in business for the first time we've ever had to before. Yeah. And so when that $84 came, it was like, okay, God, you know, it's <laughs> happening. We're doing it. He's got it. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I, I, uh, I think, I think too many people quit too early. I mean, oh, that, if, sure. if, if Jim Way Sweeney would have quit on 599 calls, yeah. yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have this amazing business and just the, the amount of people they serve every year is just mind blowing to me. If Patrick Bed David would have quit early, wow! Like I remember my first commission. I I actually had to sell pretty early. I made twelve hundred dollars. I was making five dollars and ten cents an hour at the mall. I was I was a college kid, yeah. man. I was like doing what college kids do. I was like, drinks are on me. And then I got it my first chargeback. Oh, and I was no. like, what does a chargeback mean? <laughs> what is that? And they're like, that means you got to pay that money back. I'm like, it's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? It. It's gone. <laughs> they're like, eh. so then I had to like really start working harder. But I'm so thankful I didn't like see like that much success early on because it forced you. And then when I started integrity, it was years, mm. yeah. years of just like going, man, I, I don't know if this is going to be it's gonna work. Like I, there's a there's a song by a guy named David Crowder, David Crowder band. That, Love that's David uh, Crowder. it's on his Illuminate album. A song called Deliver Me, and I would play that over and over and over. Just like mm. like I don't know you got a plan, but this isn't working. Deliver me out of this. Like all this is like out of all the madness. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. it's it's a powerful song, and I, re I I still listen to that when things get tough. I put that on because I just had it on repeat, just like. I know this is gonna work. I know this is gonna work, but thank goodness you didn't quit. Thank goodness there's yeah. so many of us that didn't quit. And that also gives perspective when you're talking to somebody else who's going through that, going like, oh, you think you got it back? <laughs> you <laughs> worked 13 months and yeah. I made $84. So what happened after the $84? What did it, did it click and y'all take off or what was it no. like? I mean, things, we, we improved. We improved. We improved. Yeah, we improved. But it's been an improvement game. Yeah. Some, yeah. some people come in, you see it all the time. They break a record, they're superstars, they do bigger. We've never been. And, and a lot of them flame out quick. Sure. Because they, they, they change their lifestyle. They lose sight of why, yeah. why they were in in the beginning. Now, a few people really can make that, that leap yeah. uh, mentally and, and emotionally and business-wise. But a lot of people are like, man, I've, I've arrived. Yeah. And, and then they change their lifestyle. They do something stupid, you know. And and then they forget who they were to get there, right? But so for you guys, it was it was still a work in progress, though. Well, so in the Bible it says that you know it's the testing of your faith that produces perseverance. Yeah. And once the the testing of your perseverance has gone, you've gone through all that. That's what's going to allow you to be fully complete, lacking nothing. Mm -hmm. And people, I think, walk in the door to financial services because it's the most profitable industry. You can make a lot of money. And they're looking at the, I want to be complete. I want to lack nothing. I want a great life, great marriage, great lifestyle. And they chase the outcome rather than falling in love with the process. Yeah. And if you don't go through the process, realizing that it's the process that really is what makes you rich, not just from a monetary standpoint, but it gives you the stamina to do what you did. I mean, look what, yeah. look where integrity is today. If you don't have all of that happen, all of these lives aren't changed. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful in retrospect, I wasn't thankful back then. For sure. That it, that it didn't happen too fast because yeah. to your point, it, it made you realize, it made me realize that that's the byproduct, yeah. your, your, your point, that's the outcome. But look at all the people you get to help. And we talk about this all the time, like the millions of people that we help with their life, health and wealth today, it has nothing to do, frankly, with us. It's about us serving them if we help enough people, then everything else is taken care of, and that's the byproduct. And I, I think we need to do a better job in this industry of kind of re-centering people on this idea that, listen, this is hard. It's going to be a lot of work. But, man, if we help people, if you truly have a heart of service, like, you can change not only people's lives, but you can change your own life like, yeah. like you guys have. So, so you, you built this amazing company, and, and you really were going – 
strong in California where you guys were yeah. from after, you know, that whole experience. And then you moved here to Dallas area. And tell us about why you moved to Dallas. One quality of life. A lot was going on in California after the pandemic. Yeah. And in terms of thinking about family and where you want to raise your yeah. family, values, principles, partners, things like that. It was a very clear choice for us that we had to move somewhere else. There were a couple spots on the map, but we had some business partners that were running an office up in Chicago and they were making a, a move as well. So we got on the phone with Patrick and David and Patrick has changed our life on multiple occasions. We wouldn't be anywhere near where we are without Patrick's involvement in our life. But he said, hey, get on the, the phone with uh, the Sopalas and they're moving to Dallas. And so we said, hey, what would it look like for us to have a joint office that we opened up together? Because we would both opened up offices individually and been yeah. successful at it, but it takes so much effort that when you have a really great partner and you can collaborate, the speed at which everyone around you succeeds, their success happens so much faster. Yeah. So we said, okay, great, Dallas it is, let's make the move and here we are and never look back. So it, it's, it, it, you just proved the point we were talking about earlier. Like any other part of business or the world, you would hear, you would say like, you're kind of competitors, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah. you guys do you and I'm gonna do me and then I'm gonna beat you, right? <laughs> I'm, no matter what. And I know you guys are competitive, so not, <laughs> please don't hear that wrong. I got you. Because you guys are competitive. But the fact that you said, look, if we come together, we can accomplish more. Like if, if we truly come together, if we stop beating each other up, we can actually accomplish more. That was the entire philosophy that we had at Integrity. That, yep. that guys, if, if, if we all keep on beating each other up, there's gonna be a race to the bottom. But if we come together, rising tide will raise all boats and we can actually accomplish more by working together mm -hmm. and still compete. Yeah, let's, let's go out and compete, but let's do it the right way with Integrity. And it's such a novel idea, it's funny because most people still don't do it. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing how very few do. And then if you think about kind of where that set you guys up, but also the Sapalas, mm -hmm. they're now great partners. Matt and Sheena are amazing people, amazing yes. leaders. But you think about the lives y'all been able to change collectively and, and separately, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And back to Pat, I mean, Patrick, but David, I mean, think about how many people can say that they he's impacted their life in so many ways. And then by impacting your life, think about like the way that you guys are impacting more and just kind of this pass it on effect. Yeah, that's incredible. So when when you're looking for new people for this business, what what is y'all's style on recruiting new people? Are y'all recruiting them to your house for dinner and then going, oh, by the way, <laughs> no, <laughs> let me tell you, we've never thing. done that. We've we're done we're that. super oh, upfront. God. We look for uh, coachable, competitive couples who have a center of influence. And we found that by working with couples, you can help them not only have a better marriage, a better mm -hmm. family, you can help them build a much more successful business. And it's just a really fun environment. I think we have a ton of couples in the squad now that, again, they get into business, because they want a better life, lifestyle, put the kids in private school, have a better work-life balance, yeah. or whatever their concept of that is. Then they get into the business and they see who they can become. And just the personal transformation that takes place, because when you're going through it, when you're having to face all of your fears, all the adversity, all the challenges that will come when you do anything in business, uh, that really forces you to get clear on your values as a family, get more committed to each other. I find that a lot of couples have never gone through something like business together. It's a very unique challenge and it presents very different conversations, but it forces you to fall in love with the process. And you start, you, you, we talk about this all the time that we're not just married, we're teammates. Yeah. And to help more couples have the mentality that their partner, their spouse is actually their teammate in life, not just someone they're you know living with and having kids yeah. with. It creates a totally different dynamic that has just been really fulfilling, I think. Yeah. Wow. I love the fact that you guys focus on couples and you work together as couples. I think that would be really fun and really challenging in a lot of ways. <laughs> it's got its own unique I, set. I know, I know for me and my, my family, I grew up in a family owned business. My mom and dad worked together oh. every day and they complemented each other really well. And mm. my dad was really passionate about serving others. My mom was really passionate about building the business and they just were able to kind of be the yin and the yang. And, but it also was challenging for them outside of work because at every dinner table they were talking about you know business and 
every like every everything was all about you know the business in that that scenario. What do you guys like to do outside of uh, work? What what are y'all's passions uh, outside of work? I think we have a couple, but I think what's so different about this business to us is the business isn't numbers. The business is people. Mm. So in the same way that if you have a big family, when you get to the dinner table, you're talking about what everybody in the family is doing. Mm. When we're sitting down, we may be talking about the people in the business, but we're talking about what's going on in their life. Uh, what are the challenges? What are they overcoming? Where do they need support and help? So to us, the business isn't talking business isn't about talking numbers. It's about talking about people and whether, yeah, whether you work in the church. I mean, I think of pastors who run large organizations oh. and long church, large churches. They're constantly talking about who are the next leaders that we're grooming? How are they going? How's that marriage? How's Bobby? How did Sally do with the surgery? So it's just, to me, it's not business, it's life. Yeah. Um, but outside the business, we're always hanging out with those folks. We're doing yeah. dinner, we're going to the movies. I'm more of the- He's the adventure one. I'm like, I'm let's the... go do something fun. She's like, let's have to the house. You're an yeah. artist though, too. So. Yeah, I was you, an art major yeah. in college. Yeah, so I like what, to paint. What's your, what's your favorite kind of art? Um, I like, I like, things that are bright and colorful and like color really speaks to me. It's like how I feel. Um, I'm more abstract and I'm more attracted to the emotion that you feel from a piece of work oh, wow. versus like the, the detail, the detail inspires me, but it doesn't like capture my heart. Yeah. So I just love vibrancy, I guess. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. We may need you to help us out with some art here. Oh, I don't know that I'm that good. I just love it. That but, is awesome. I yeah. wish I was an artist. I got, I can't sing, I can't paint, I can't, yeah. like I lost, I can't play any instruments, I can't do any of that stuff, but yeah. but uh, I, I love the fact, I want to come back to, this is a people business. It I is. say this all the time. This is a people business. If we ever forget that, we're going to be out of business. I truly believe that. It comes back to relationships. You've said that, Jennifer, like it comes back to like relationships. And if you can yeah. see people as people, and, and we're serving real people. That, yeah. That's why even in the integrity uh, eye is there's like empty space in the middle and it's to represent one person at a time. It's like this idea of this, a clear vision of one person at a time we're serving because those that's a real person, somebody's mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, whatever it is. And there's no limit to how many people we can serve. And if we can always focus on that one, yeah. if you focus on that one, then you can take care of many in so many different ways. And, and I, I love I love kind of how you guys look at that. I love the fact that you're um, building as, as couples and bringing in couples. So when you when you recruit somebody, because yeah. I know a lot of people are like, okay, how do you do it? <laughs> so what does that look like? You, you find somebody at, at church at a uh, at, at an event, uh, how do you, what's the, what's the, how, how do you get them interested in what, what we're doing here? Um, I don't know that I get people interested. Um, I try to be interested in their life. Hmm. Um, there's a saying, I don't know who said it, everybody gets credited for it, but if instead of being trying to be interesting, other people be interested. Hmm. And when you, if you really truly care about a family, their future, their calling, them fulfilling their life's highest purpose on yeah. the earth, it's gonna change the way you relate to somebody. So when we're meeting somebody or someone gets referred to us or someone reaches out on social media, they see kind of the, the work that we're doing on social media, they're like, hey, I either want their life or I want their marriage or I want their income or whatever it is, they're attracted to something. When we're having that conversation, I'm not looking at the person, I'm, look, I'm attempting to look through the person into their future asking myself, could I see this person being wildly successful? Could I see this person crushing it here? Because if you can see past who's in front of you to who they could be, then you're always gonna speak to the better version of them, not the mm. current version of them. And I think the reason why so many of us stay stuck is we stay committed to only looking at the current or the past version. So we're thinking past, present, and you've gotta think present, future with people. Wow. And by speaking present, future into people, people can feel that you really see something in them that you truly believe. And when you speak that over them and into them constantly on a daily basis, they start to become whatever you speak. And so uh, I don't try to get people interested. I really try to be interested in people. That is so powerful. Like, I mean, if you think about um, what, what, is, what is the most powerful word to somebody in any language? It's their name, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you recognize them as, as a person and you 
sit down and you talk to them as a person, right? There's very, like, like a lot of times, especially in business, it's about what can I get from you, right? Yeah. But you were just talking about is like, what can I help you get from yourself? And let me help you with that. And I see this future for you. And that is, that is such a unique way of thinking about it. Um, maybe not to you guys, but just in, in the world's view and in business, because if, if you, if you, most people don't have people in their lives yeah. that are, are going, look, I really see you being amazing at this. I'm, I'm helping my, my, uh, um, son's, uh, football team. I'm, I'm helping coach my, my nice. son's flag football uh, team. And uh, first practice, I tell this uh, one little boy. I mean, he's just a he's just a really fast, really athletic kid. And if you if you know flag football, it's five on five, and the center can go out for passes. And so I told him, I want you to be be center. He's like, I don't want to be center. Like I I, I want to be a receiver. And I was like, Well, here's how this works. And it's kind of like a tight end in in uh, football. It's like the safety valve in a lot of ways. And I I told him, I said, Hey, buddy. Um, I think you're going to be amazing at this mm -hmm. because you're really fast. You've got really good hands um, and, and you're going to do really well, but you got to trust me. Like I want you to be center you gotta trust me. and, uh, and, and he ended up scoring three touchdowns the first oh, game. That's amazing. And he was like, so jacked. I mean, it was the first game he'd ever played five football. <laughs> and he was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to do that. I want to be the, the receiver. I'm like, bro, I think you're And now he's just like the confidence he gets I mean, they're fifth graders, right? Yeah. But that that power, that confidence that they get. And a lot of people don't go um, around their life where somebody goes, I see something in you. And I think you might be in this role. Mm -hmm. You could be really successful. I'm going to help you. Yeah. And what you're doing is really giving people so much hope and really changing their lives. And that's this whole, you, you were talking about Patrick changing your life. Think about how you're changing people's lives. And we talk about Inspire as a podcast. Think about how you're inspiring like that next generation and ultimately how many more people you, you help. Uh, it's inspiring to me. So thank you guys for being partners at Integrity. Thank you. Couldn't thank be you. more excited. What are you all most excited about now that, that uh, we're, we're doing this? When we got started, I think the, the platform that Patrick had created, because the company was very new, we didn't have the level of technology that we do now no. and everything Patrick's built. And I look at what Integrity has done with all of its partners to help them really launch. What I'm most excited about is that the people that we've recruited, that we're mentoring, we're developing, they can achieve success so much faster. Yeah. A whole new level. And, and we're already seeing it. We're seeing couples in their 20s and 30s make insane incomes, yeah. having insane impact, um, yeah. both in their families, their personal income, their tithing, their giving, the projects they're supporting. So to be able to partner with yeah. what you've laid the foundation for, it's just gonna help them grow so much faster. Well, some, some of the things we're working on, and be patient with us, but some of the technology we're, we're introducing now, we just rolled out Life Center. We've got, it's kind of based on our Medicare platform. Uh, we'll be opening up some of the new products uh, that you guys uh, are really engaged in. Our, our new agents to the business, talking about being, getting there faster, new agents to the business. We had over 100,000 advisors on this platform last year. Um, and now we've got a bunch of data to support what we've been spending millions and millions of dollars on. New agents to the business that had never been in the business were 38% more successful using our platform. I love that. Just wow. because of the technology aspect. Yep. The speed. Agents who had been in, this, in, in the business for over a year and been successful sold 63% more applications. <laughs> wow. Like it, not doing any more work, 63% more applications. So if you can make it more effective, more efficient, and that's what I think is like the opportunity we've got uh, to really help more people become more successful and ultimately serve more people, and we're just scratching the surface. And by partnering together with you and your team, listen, there is no limit to what we can accomplish. Yeah, We're very excited. We're very thankful. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys. We got something for you, if we can give it to you. Okay. okay. So our organization, Nobility Financial, okay. that's, the, that's the official name. Inside of our organization, we refer to ourselves as the royal family. Mm. And everything's about bringing out the nobility in people, bringing out their power, wealth, influence, bringing out their best self, helping them overcome their former self. I love that. There's this quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, true nobility isn't beating your fellow man, it's overcoming your former self. So we talk about 
the nobility. Hold on, say that again. That is powerful. True nobility is not beating your fellow man. It's overcoming your former self. Wow. And so you can be competitive. Can you also compete and just get better? Um, But a lot of organizations in the insurance world, whoever kind of the flagship leader is, whatever the name of their agency is, nobility, everyone else kind of has to, uh, they they, they take that logo on, that brand on, that name on, that identity on, and it kind of becomes a a representation. But there's a lot of folks that we want to empower to create their own identity. Mm. So instead of having a a logo or a name, nobility, that everyone kind of has to salute that flag, there's nothing wrong with that. We wanted to really flip the flip the script and flip the foundation and say instead of having a name where you're kind of under the name, we want to create a foundation to springboard you. And so everyone can be a part of the royal family, but there's room for you to create your own identity, your own agency, your own name. And uh, so royal family is what we go by. And whenever somebody goes from being in the broker program to becoming a broker and they get to make their own agency name and kind of brand, we knight them. Oh, awesome. And kind of going along with this whole thing of nobility. In old school world, uh, you were a serf. And if you were a serf at a castle, you couldn't own land. You couldn't, you know, do anything on your own. You just worked for somebody. You worked for their land. And so often in today's economy, people are working jobs. They're renting houses. Everything of their life is rented and they don't own anything. They don't own a business. They don't own the stuff. And so helping people move from serfdom to knighthood in the old school days was a process that's called ennoblement. And when you crossed over from being a serf and now you could own property and stuff, you were ennobled and then you could be knighted and own stuff. So we knight people as they do this. Oh my gosh. And uh, we give them a sword. We give them a sword. Wow. And uh, so all of our brokers have one of these swords. Now, wow. you're, you're way, way ahead of our league. We're yes. grateful to you. No, we are no. honored to be part of the Integrity family. Oh We're my gosh. thankful for your sacrifice and your service. But every single one of them gets one of these swords. And it just says the royal family on it. We wanted wow. to give you one of our swords. This and, uh, is so nice. We're oh thankful to be God. part of the Integrity so family. We call it the Integrity family. We're, so you've got the royal family. We're glad to be part yeah, of it. This is one of the most amazing gifts Ever. This is so inspiring. Thank you very much. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, yeah. welcome to the Integrity family. And yes. we are proud to be part of the royal family. Thank and you. I love this idea that we're all owners of this. Yeah. And one of the things we did at Integrity is that we made every employee an owner. Which is incredible. Because it should change the way they serve people. Mm. And it shouldn't be about everybody working for somebody else. It should be about this is all of us. So I relate so much to you guys in so many thank ways. Thank you so much. We're so thank thankful. y'all so much. Yeah, so proud you. to be part of the royal family. I'm, I'm almost speechless. I mean, whenever you think about the depth of, of some of the things we talked about today, think about just the way about seeing the best in people and what they can become and, and the impact that we have on people's lives in so many different ways. And having people like the Gaines come into the Integrity family. And I, I think that, you know, I say that we're just getting started a lot because I truly believe we, we hadn't even scratched the surface. Yeah. But by having leaders like you helping influence that into the future, there's no limit to what we can do. So I can't wait to serve alongside of you guys and, and can't wait to see where we go from here. Yeah. So thank you guys. Future's bright. Hope everybody has a great week. God bless you all and take care.